Your Humanities Half Hour is brought to you by the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Katherine Perry. On the evening of October 24, 2018, the strongest storm on Earth in the year smashed through a chain of tiny, beautiful islands in the Pacific that most people in the world have never heard of, our Marianas. And in its aftermath, the typhoon left a wave of destruction, including thousands of homes destroyed and thousands more people homeless. The full strength of the storm left the islands without power and water, but I feel the true strength was seen in the response of the people following the storm. The community came together with a lot of resilience and gave birth to a hashtag that has swept across social media, hashtag Marianne is strong. We have several guests today, artists, to share their stories, their experiences, and the first is Lenny Leon. Lenny, welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, Catherine. Well, let's start off with where were you during the storm? Um, so during the storm, I was home, home alone. Um, I live in an apartment, so I was fortunate to have a um, concrete roof over my head. Um, but that didn't you know, shelter me from the sounds and the shaking windows and all the other um, really, really frightening stuff. Like, I've lived... I'm, I'm 40 years old right now. I've lived through so many storms in the Marianas, you know. Right. And at 40, this is the this was the most I've ever been scared. Like I was literally scared for my own life and those of families and friends that I know of. You shared your um, Instagram account, and I was looking at it before the show. And the day after the storm, actually the 25th. Um, you were posting and stories. How did that come about? Um, that came about by accident, to be honest. Um, at around 7 o'clock when I n- noticed that the wind had somewhat subsided. It was still strong, but somewhat subsided. Yeah, 7 o'clock. The wind was still blowing. It was still really... Like a weak typhoon at that right, point. Right, right. But then um, I had to brave it. Like, I, my... I have an auntie who lives, it was living alone over at um, Aslito, so I drove over, right? I tried calling her and calling her and couldn't get a hold of her, so I was driving towards Aslito, but then along the way, I was able to get in contact with her over phone, and she assured me that everything was okay. Great. So I um, decided, okay, I'm just going to take the longer route in, taking my time, just kind of cruise. I was... You know, I was curious, and that's not a good thing. Normally, <laughs> after a typhoon, True. you're supposed to stay indoors. You're supposed to wait until everything is secure and nothing. Uh, it's all been called off, right? The storm has been called off. But then I drove through that post office road, and that's where I met the first family, the Little Moir family who had lost a sister. I sat with them, spoke with them. It was still in the middle of a... You know, there was still a lot of rain falling on them, and I felt kind of bad because they were sitting in the rain and had looked completely frozen. Um, so I went up to them, I took out my camera, and asked if I could take a few photos of them. They didn't respond, so I just sat with probably like 15, 30 minutes, and just trying to talk to them, and then finally allowed me to take the camera, a uh, photo. And after the photo, they started talking. And after they started talking, they seemed a little more open, um, as if a little bit of weight was released just from talking about it. That's when they told me the sister had, you know, lost her life during the storm. And this, so, I believe, was the only fatality during the actual storm. During the actual storm, and that was And you happened the only. to come across this family. Right. So uh, I thought, oh, wait, this is a story that has to be told. So um, I went to social media, and I posted on both in, uh, Instagram and Facebook um, the story about it. And within minutes, people were 
messaging me, asking me how they can help, you know, showing remorse, showing what they can do. At that moment, I decided, okay, I have a camera. My house is okay. My home is okay for now. I have a full tank of gas. Why don't I go and tell more stories? Why don't I talk to more people? And over the years, when normally when a storm hits the CNMI, the Mariana Islands, most people will post photos of cars tumbling over, uh, trees tumbling over, um, and you know telephone poles and like a cleared field of uh, the devastation. But there's almost very little on the human um, aspect of it. And at one point in my life, when I was younger, I had aspired to be a photojournalist, somewhat of a photojournalist. And I have a bit of a background in storytelling, so I, I took that, I took that, um, what I know, and see if I could use that to inspire others to want to help too. What are you finding when you go out and you talk to people? How are people, how are people? First couple of days, or throughout the entire week after the um, Super Typhoon year two, people appear to be in shock. Um, when I approach people at that time, they, a lot of them didn't really respond. They didn't even acknowledge my presence uh, until I really approached them to a you know, close range. But now people are starting to open up. You know, a little has been lifted, I guess, of um, people's burdens. Red Cross has been helping. FEMA has been helping. A whole bunch of groups like My Pros and of course CNMI and SYP, Saipan Young Profes Professionals. They've all been really helping. There was this one Filipino um, old gentleman that I approached one time. Um, it was probably the fourth day af after the storm had hit. Saipan and Tinian and he didn't notice that I was standing next to him and I was talking to him and trying to greet him and when he finally looked up at me I was like hey are you okay and stuff like that and then he's it's like sorry I'm trying to call my wife he f for four days hadn't been able to reach his wife in the Philippines so the anxiety that he held, you know, that he had just thinking, you know, worried that his wife might be worried that he might have, you know, died or something like that, or, you know, something. That really bothered him. So it, that on top of the shock, not knowing what to do, not knowing how to do it, not knowing where to go to get it done was a struggle for him. But then... Luckily, somebody offered, you know, a phone and was it able to dial his um, wife's number in the Philippines. They were able to get connected and finally able to reach. But as far as the photos and what I hope for them is, um, honestly, archive, right? Um, I want to donate these to the humanities and libraries or whoever is willing to take them even if they remain on, on social media wherever as long as they're accessible for younger generations to kind of have an idea of the struggles and you know the experience that we are currently having right now I spoke to many families many um, people who I thought needed to talk to uh, needed somebody to talk to and stories that I thought would be worth posting and they were all worth posting um, or telling you know to convey and there was with this one um, family with two um, with an older couple and both were dialysis are dialysis patients one with diabetes and kidney problem prior to that editing I've had already collected so much like not collected have heard so many experiences from so many people and those themselves were emotionally heavy 
and when it got to the point where I was editing a photo of the couple with dialysis, uh, the dialysis patient couple, it hit me like all the emotional weight that I've been kind of gathering from all the people that have told me their experiences and their stories finally hit me. I just didn't realize it at that moment. And so while editing, teardrops were actually falling off of my face. That's, I, I literally broke. I, I broke. I don't know how to explain it, but like I couldn't continue editing. I couldn't continue thinking. I, all I could think about is what am I going to do to help them? How can I help them? I, I am fortunate. You know, like I said earlier, I am fortunate my home was not badly damaged, but they lost everything. How do I help then? For people that would like to see your work, where can they find it? Right now, they're available on Instagram um, at Pacific Aesthetics. Pacific, Pacific underscore Aesthetics. Okay. And on social on Facebook, it will be um, Lenny Leon, L E N I, L E O N. I don't know if well. What I appreciate is that the stories and the photos have been able to get some f- folks um, the help they need, right? Like um, for example, there was a photo I shared of um, Bangladesh mother holding her baby while her um, six-year-old was sitting in the background. That's called Hush Little Baby. I think I titled that photo Hush Little Baby. And the thing is, that day I met the family was the little boy's birthday. Just so happened, right? From that story, an f- uh, immigrant family was will not qualify, by the way, for many assistance like FEMA, uh, SBA, or stuff like that. They, they've lost everything and probably will have a tougher chance of recovering than others. But because of that story, because of the photos, um, First Lady... Um, Lady Diane Torres and her team were able to put together a bunch of toys, clothes, and relief efforts for the family. And a whole bunch of gifts, birthday gifts for little Mafudge. So I think that alone being able to serve that purpose is enough for me. Just being able to tell it uh, tell your story is, I think, good enough to lift even a little of the weight that you've experienced. Thank you so much, and we hope that you continue helping people tell their stories and healing. Thank you. I hope so, too. And I hope others can join me on it, too. I've been talking to Lenny Leon. He's been going around taking uh, photos and doing interviews of some of the victims of Super Typhoon U2. And you can find his work on Instagram at Pacific underscore Aesthetics. Did you know that you can donate up to $5,000 to the Humanities Council through the CNMI Education Tax Credit Program? Donations from individuals and corporations qualify and can be used to offset your local wage and salary tax, BGRT, and earnings tax. Call our office at 235-4785 to see how you can support humanities programs in our community and obtain a tax credit for your donation. Sizu Usma'asi, Olomai, and thank you. Welcome back to Your Humanities Half Hour. In this half of the show, we're speaking with an artist uh, whose work has been popping up on Saipan, Tinian, even Rhoda. And it's been an inspiration to many. Cheerful paintings and inf- inspirational quotes um, on huge pieces of destroyed roofing tin. Mina Benaventi, welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. Thank you for this lovely invitation. Very happy to be here today. Well, we're happy to see your uh, artwork on the side of the road when we're driving around every day, but let's start off with where were you during Super Typhoon U2? 
Uh, so I have three kids. Um, I am a legal guardian of one more, and my mom and stepdad and my husband, uh, we all live in one house. So there's eight of us in, in a house, and um, we were upstairs, wow. and our window started breaking, and uh, it was crazy during the typhoon so we have this like small little nook um i'd say it's maybe like five by five so the eight of us kind of stuck in there away from blowing glass and wind and howls and how are you guys doing now we are taking it day by day mm, yeah, like we, a lot of people yes um uh, and we're in san antonio so um i'm pretty sure a lot of people from the south are like yeah we're from the south you know <laughs> yeah all you have to say is i'm from the south and you get Represent. that empathetic look. yeah yeah well how is it you came to create these pieces of work um i i don't know what the right terminology is um i i i battle with anxiety and Every now and then I battle with, um, I would, I would want to say like minor depression. And I was sitting in our backyard and these two pieces of tin uh, were hanging off our gate and they were just like gnawing at each other. And I'd feel anxiety kind of looking at it. And I decided a uh, perspective, um, kind of relies on me so I I begged my husband to move it and I got one of the pieces and I just stared at it and then I was like okay like I'm totally gonna paint on this and so I painted on it and then um, I wanted to share that perspective with uh, everyone else who was just kind of going through this heartache this uh, disaster and the response was overwhelming. Yeah, it was, everyone was like, oh, I love it. It gives me hope. And it really does. Thank you. Yeah. How many pieces do you think you've done so far? I, th I think I've done over 100 pieces. Um, we can definitely find around 40 uh, in the public areas of our island, including DFS and American Memorial Park. Um, and there are a very good number of pieces that have also flown off island with um, some of our volunteers and some of our federal agents. And oh, um, they wanted to take a piece back. With yeah, them? yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, um, I was kind of thinking about the term "beauty and the brokenness." I think I don't know if that's the name of a book or something like that, but it seems like you really um, captured that. How did it make you feel? To, and how does it make you feel to express yourself um, in this way, in through this form? I have an issue with like expressing my emotions in general. Um, there's a huge wall between me and the world, and sometimes like being able to think sane is through painting. Um, so. It, expressing all those emotions I guess is what it really is if that makes sense I think it does and I think it'll make sense for people listening who are still struggling in the recovery and it's been several weeks now and they're probably fatigued physically mentally emotionally um, so it's nice um, for you to be willing to be that transparent and let them know that it's a very common feeling and there's positive ways to um, express, um, you know, what you're feeling in this disaster. Would you offer any other words of encouragement for people? I know you said uh, your your artwork is your expression, but um, if you could talk to the people that that are getting joy from these paintings, what would you want to say to them? <clears throat> I think the biggest. Thing that I would want people to know is that it's it's perspective. Um, what do you mean by that? So, on the days that I paint, I also have people um, 
in front of me next to me who are clearing their tin as debris, as pieces of trash. I think um, I was able to transform that initial perspective that I had that this piece of debris could be changed. Um, so looking at a piece of trash or looking at an, a, a certain emotion or a certain situation can totally be transformed by um, perspective. I think that's what I really want to send out. And I have a lot of people who call me and they're like, oh, you know, I have this brand new tin. And then I think the ones that are closest to heart are just like the ones that are torn and um, ripped and rusted and um, not that they're any more valuable than the newer ones, but they have a they have a sense of character, you know. They've gone through something. It makes you feel like they went through something, you know. They they've every single tin that we see that's being picked up was there for some valuable reason, you know. It kept my dog warm for years, for example, or it kept my family safe for years or kept my tool safe. Yeah, pretty much perspective, I guess. Yeah. Do you have any favorite pieces out there? There are certain pieces um, that I think are closer to my heart just because like maybe in the moment I was super anxious or frustrated or mad and then um, a lot of the times I kind of decide on well what would make the people happy and when I see a happy response I think those are the pieces that just kind of like oh, okay I, I did my job you know I, I wanted that happy message and they're good yeah I kind of see an, uh, an analogy between you know um, a t horrible thing that happened to to the island and to these pieces of tin that in the end can can become something beautiful um, especially I would say in the resiliency of, of our community I don't know if you've heard but I've had so I've had s heard several key leaders from off island express that they've never seen a community come together in a disaster like we have here in the Marianas and um, that's a beautiful testament I think um, to who we are and what our, our strength is and um, so you look at these paintings and as you said they were they were for an original purpose and something horrible happened and now they still you know they still shine right they still have meaning do you have um, any idea what's going to happen with these tins in the future? Um, or what would you like to have happen with them in the future? I don't know. It's it belongs to the community. I mean, I don't want I don't want any ownership. It's it's ours. So whatever we want to do is, I guess, what's right. It's what will happen. I. Once they're out there, I don't own any of them. They're for us, yeah. And another really wonderful thing is that um, we mentioned that um, they're posted here in Saipan, Tinian, Rota, but you also uh, have some heading to Guam or in Guam? Yeah, um, I think one of the greatest things that I felt is what you had mentioned earlier, is the resiliency and the... Um, the coming togetherness of, of our community. And I really wanted to express that we are one Marianas. Um, and I know um, we have had that kind of collision between Sinamai and, and Guam, but on the global map, we are the Northern Marianas. And when I, um, when I reflect and see the amount of help and responses and sympathy and the desperation that we've 
gotten from our people, um, people from the Northern Marianas, including Guam. Uh, it only felt right to just send out a very small symbol on a tin uh, coming from me to say thank you. But like at the end of the day, we are really, we all are one, um, subtracting the ethnic backgrounds, subtracting um, whoever we are, um, the facade that we have built. So the Laddie stones are painted red and green. Red because we all bleed the same color and green because we, we all walk the same land. Um, that was kind of the definition and that we all stand strong. Yeah. Well, if people would like to see more of your work, mm -hmm. where can they find it online? Uh, they're pretty much almost all of them uh, are posted on Facebook. Uh, I have quite a few on my Instagram. Uh, so yeah, if they like want to see digital photos, I guess they're all available there. And what is your Facebook and Instagram? Mina Beneventi for Facebook, M-E-E-N-A Beneventi. And then on Instagram, I am the Rustic Plumeria. Rustic Plumeria. Yes, the Rustic Plumeria. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for making time to share today, and most especially for the gift of hope that you're giving us through your artwork. Thank you. I wish everyone has a sliver of hope that they carry around with them all the time. Our guests today have been artist Mina Beneventi and earlier in the show, videographer Lenny Leon, lending their skill as artists to help the people of the Mariana share their experiences during and following Super Typhoon YouTube and finding inspiration to recover and heal. This has been Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Katherine Perry. This program was supported by a We the People grant awarded to the Northern Marianas Humanities Council from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Any views, findings, conclusions, or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily represent those of the National Endowment for the Humanities or the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Mm -hmm.